This program has been made possible in part by Interweave, the handmade life. Your craft community for books, magazines, videos, patterns, events, and more. On the web at interweavestore.com. Forgetful knitters like me are always forgetting what row they left off on. Well, in an ideal world, we would all carry around row counters and keep copious notes every time we knit something, but sometimes life gets in the way. So I have a few just really easy ways to keep track of where you are so that you are always sure that you're doing the right thing. The first thought is to, whenever you're knitting a long straightaway of stockinette stitch or another plain stitch that's not easy to, that doesn't have easily definable repeats, um, row repeats, I always suggest taking like a split ring stitch marker, which is one of these markers that actually opens up, just like a safety pin, and marking, just slipping it into every tenth row, you know, sort of an edge stitch, one in from the edge, or even the actual salvage stitch itself, every tenth row, so that at a glance you can easily tell how many rows you've worked, and if your pattern tells you so, how many you need to work. Further, um, I knew here that I needed to knit 36 rows of stockinette stitch. So w once I got here, I could easily see that I only needed a little way further to go. This is really useful on socks, on sleeves, anywhere where you're knitting two things alike and you really do want them to be the same, even though they're just stockinette and you don't want to knit to just a length. The other idea I have for you is to, when you when your pattern is indicating something like work a certain number of increased rows or repeat this increased row 12 times or six times. Uh, rather than stopping to count after every single increased row that you've worked, why not just actually go ahead and at the time of knitting, slip a marker into the, the product of your increase or decrease row. So here I knew that I needed to, after the initial set of decreases, which are easy to remember because both sides have been decreased. I knew that I needed to decrease 14 more times before I could start working straight. So here, it's a little bit easier than bending down and peering at your dark yarn to, to count out your increase rows. If you mark them as you go, you can just count them really easily. And then finally, you can also use markers to mark horizontal lengths in your knitting, not just vertical lengths. So in a case like this, I've got markers setting off the center stitches that I need to bind off for the back neck. And I did this on the last wrong side row before I started the row on which I would bind off my stitches. So rather than needing to bind off and shape and count all at the same time, I put these in um, ahead of time, knowing which stitches I needed and how many stitches in from the end they both, they both were. And then I could work my shaping here, I could worry about that by itself, and then once I got to this marker, I knew that I needed to bind off all the way until I reached this marker. So those are just a few examples of places where markers can come in really handy in your knitting.